Lauren's going to be talking about the role of the libraries within open education communities. Um, so I'm just going to um, check with my colleague Fiona Jones that she's been able to stop and start recording just so we have a break. That's perfect. Great. Over to you, Lauren. Great. Thanks so much, Martin. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Loud and clear. Okay. Wonderful. Um, great. Well, thanks everyone for coming to my webinar, Advocacy from Within Building Sustainable Open Education Communities Across the Library. Um, I'm Lauren Ray, Open Education and Psychology Librarian at the University of Washington Libraries, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, I'm joining you today from Seattle, Washington, where the sun is just starting to come up over the Olympic Mountains, um, though right now from my window it's too cloudy to see those mountains at the moment. Um, and I have my webcam on, but I'm going to, um, just to say hello, but I'm going to turn that off to hopefully help with um, any uh, connection issues that might happen. Uh, so I'll do that now. Um, and today I want to talk to you about a project I undertook at my library to help connect subject librarians to the work of OER. Um, I was excited to travel to London for OER 20, but I'm thankful to the conference organizers for putting together this virtual program. And I'm really looking forward to learning from the other presentations given over the next day and a half. <laughs> That's right, the Olympic Mountains have been postponed, Jeff. <laughs> so, um, what I'd like to do today is just give you a little bit of context about um, the library that I work at, um, talk to you about some OER workshops that I developed for subject librarians, um, talk about how those workshops were evaluated, um, and give you some takeaways and share with you some librarian-created OER um, and hopefully have some time for questions. So um, a little bit about the University of Washington. Um, we're a large public research institution. We have, we are a multi-campus university located in Seattle, Tacoma, and Bothell. That's in Washington State on the West Coast um, in the U.S. We have um, around 57,000 students and over 4,000 um, faculty or instructors. Um, and we have more than 613 degree options across 312 different academic programs. Um, and within our system, we have 16 libraries spread across those campuses. Um, within our library, we have 70 subject librarians also across our three campuses. And as um, many of you are familiar um, with the role of subject librarians, probably um, in general, they provide um, support for research and teaching through practices like collection development, reference instructional services. And they're a crucial player in terms of outreach to departments, to instructors, um, both in terms of teaching and learning and research at the campus. Campus. Um, we also, um, over the years, functional specialist librarian roles have emerged in academic libraries in the U.S. as well as internationally. Functional specialists don't have subject assignments to a specific academic department, but instead serve in roles meant to meet the needs of the entire campus. And at our library, here are a few of the librarian roles that we have. So um, we have an instructional design librarian, data services librarians, user experience librarian, copyright librarians, and so on and so forth. And um, in 2016, our libraries undertook an organizational review initiative that was aimed at reorganizing our research and learning services department. Um, as part, in addition to creating a separate learning services unit, as well as a scholarly communication and publishing unit and other organizational alignments, our subject librarians were organized into teams in order to increase collaboration, develop opportunities to address emerging areas of teaching and research need, and expand the capacity of individual subject librarians. Um, this also came at the same time that my my half of my role as the first open education librarian was created for our university libraries. And a little bit about me, um, I've been an academic librarian at the University of Washington for 
over 12 years. My first role focused on instructional design and distance learning services for students in our fee-based professional degree programs, where I created tutorials and streamlined instructional content created by the libraries to meet the needs of students working in online courses. Starting in 2010, I led the opening and development of our research comments, which was sort of an experimental incubator space um, focused on fostering interdisciplinary connections and providing graduate student services. Um, and that's where I started um, a series of uh, programs, including Scholar Studio and our Collaborating with Strangers series that were aimed at um, getting um, graduate student researchers to kind of connect across departments. In both of these roles, making successful connections with subject librarians was crucial. Um, as a functional librarian, I have always relied on subject librarians to market the services and products my teams created to their departments. Um, and the programs were also um, that I created as Research Commons librarian were also designed to get subject librarians engaged with interdisciplinary research. I've always had a strong interest in libraries, organizational development, and tackling the somewhat messy question, how can subject librarians and functional librarians use our shared values to work better together? One of my long-term values as the librarian, regardless of my work area, is putting people over collections and platforms back into the work that's happening. And I think the work I'll, I describe here nicely ties in with this conference theme and spotlighting the value of care and building sustainable community within open education. So now I'm going to talk about the series of workshops I've created for subject librarian teams at my institution. So um, prior to starting in my new role, um, my colleagues who worked around open um, OER and textbook affordability initiatives uncovered a really strong interest at our campus for um, OER authoring amongst instructors. And given this knowledge at the start of my position, I really wanted to develop a series of open pedagogy and OER publishing workshops um, for instructors. However, at the time, I was member of our scholarly communication outreach and education team. And as part of that team, um, we did a project where we conducted interviews with subject librarian teams to get at their priorities and challenges around things um, dealing with openness and scholarly communication and how we might address those in their work. Um, and while our librarians were able to speak clearly to their concerns around open access journal publishing and infrastructure needs that they had around supporting digital publishing and data, OER came up much less frequently. Um, we heard some librarians who would say things like, I know OER is a specific thing, I just don't know how to describe it. Librarians mentioned knowing that students paid too much for textbooks but felt there were too many barriers to effectively address this challenge themselves and didn't feel like they had an, under, an understanding of open education beyond this textbook issue. At the same time, however, librarians in these conversations recognize that seeing students as producers rather than just consumers of knowledge and addressing information privilege was part of their role as instructors and reference consultants. So participating in this interview project gave me insight into the ways in which our siloed areas of open, open data, open access, digital scholarship, et cetera, have created barriers to addressing open education in a sustainable way and opportunities for outreach reach. Um, so I saw these conversations as an opportunity to further uh, my colleagues' understanding of open education, and I tabled my idea for instructor-facing workshop series and instead decided to create a program of OER training for our subject librarians. The goals of this were to um, increase my colleagues' understanding of open education beyond textbook affordability, um, to start a conversation with them about um, how faculty in their departments might be receptive to OER and whether they had information on how textbooks were selected to create openly licensed materials for OER librarians at other institutions, um, and to engage subject librarians in creating OER themselves and to promote press books, which we had just started as on a two-year pilot. 
Um, and But primarily, uh, it was really to build my own capacity for OER support at my institution. Being a 0.5 open education librarian in such a large institution, I really had to rely on my colleagues' um, support um, and outreach to their own department in order to um, sustain OER programs. So the components of the workshops that, um, which were about an hour and a half um, that I developed, um, focused on definitions um, outlining how OER and open pedagogy were really distinct from open access. I think many of my colleagues still kind of mix up uh, the terms open access and OER, and um, so getting at kind of the, the five R's and other ways in which these are distinct was important. Um, I also used the workshops as an opportunity to showcase OER and open pedagogy examples in their disciplines, so really speaking to the kinds of um, projects that instructors and in their departments might be interested in. We had a hands-on time um, working in press books. Um, I had an overview of H5P and Hypothesis as tools for OER. Um, and I also used the time to talk about critical issues in OER, like open washing, inclusive access, and student agency in OER creation. Um, I wanted to bring back the issues I was learning about at conferences um, like these because I knew that they might be more engaging for my colleagues than just talking about textbooks. Um, I also shared information about my um, current OER work on campus and to, had quest, time for questions and discussion. So now um, I'm just going to show some examples of what I included in each workshop. Um, and when showing disciplinary examples of OER, I tried to really tell the story of these resources beyond just being static, free, openly licensed stuff. Rather than just listing resources, which sometimes I think as librarians we're really good at, um, I found background information on how an open pedagogy assignment was created, quotes from students who participated in the creation of a work, or a story about how an OER was remixed into another OER. Um, so for instance, with our social sciences librarian team, I talked about um, uh, Wikimedia, um, Wik using Wikipedia as an assignment. I showed the NOBA project in which students created topical videos on psychology topics. And I showed examples of how um, OpenStax um, textbooks, for instance, in business could be remixed and revised. For our Sciences Librarian Workshop, um, I showed examples of how OER can be more than just textbooks. Um, for instance, in this example from um, a pharmacology study guide done at the University of Minnesota. Um, and I also um, talked about this student-created environmental science textbook from Ohio State University, where students wrote about science and engineering technical environmental challenges and in the process learned about um, open access and publishing. Um, in our uh, my workshop with our arts and humanities librarians, I talked about this example of a student authored work from the University of Wisconsin called Creators, Collectors, and Community. Communities Making Ethnic Identities Through Objects, um, a student created work in an art history class, um, as well as the open anthology of earlier American literature. Um, this um, project uh, that many of you are familiar with from Robin DeRosa at Plymouth State University. Um, I also expanded my workshop for other groups of library staff, including our East Asia librarians who support Chinese, Japanese, and Korean studies um, on, at our university. Um, so I showed them this example of OER from University of British Columbia, um, the Meiji at 150 digital teaching resources that included digitized documents and visual materials from the archival session, from their archival collection, as well as um, examples of um, language learning resources in OER, such as this Korean through folk tales um, OER designed for um, early um, uh, Korean courses and licensed CC by NC. <laughs> um, so most librarians, I, I did a survey after the workshops to get some feedback, and most librarians reported that the workshop greatly increased their understanding of OER 
provided them with examples that were relevant to the departments that they served and gave them a good understanding of how to use Pressbooks. Um, whether the workshop provided a better understanding of open pedagogy was slightly less strong. Um, and I also used the time to get some feedback on whether instructors would be interested in creating OER in their departments and if um, they were aware of how textbooks were chosen, many of which said that they were not, but some pointed to curriculum committees and um, contacts that could be a good start for me in doing targeted outreach. So my takeaways um, were that, um, at least for my campus, um, many subject librarians are tied to their roles in supporting research over supporting teacher teaching, which can pose a barrier to connecting with open education. And I think this is probably true at larger research-focused institutions. Um, I also found that it was challenging to sort of find examples of OER that told the story of how that OER was created. Um, so I really had to do a lot of digging to kind of find out how something was created and get quotes and things so that that would help those resources resonate more. Um, and um, I found it useful to really tailor OER workshops to attendees and emphasize the use in classroom as well as student outcomes. I think in the future I would expand more time talking about critical issues like open washing and inclusive access since I I know anecdotally that these um, are still coming up as kind of confusing points amongst my colleagues. Um, and I also just wanted to show a few examples of librarian created OER. Um, after my workshop, um, our performing arts librarian, Angela Weaver, um, created uh, this drama surgical case book um, called La France Vie. Um, it's a um, production book based on her own research on Marie Antoinette, and she wanted to use it as an example to present to faculty members in um, performing arts at our institution. Um, and she thought it would be a good idea to um, show people about how um, press books and this OER format would give them an opportunity to collaborate and comment outside of the play's production itself. Um, our political science and public affairs librarian, Emily Keller, was inspired from the workshop and worked with a graduate student in our human rights um, center um, who created this how-to FOIA guide. It's a guide to filing Freedom of Information Act requests um, that's openly licensed and allows for greater access. And finally, this badass women in the Pacific Northwest scene is an entirely student-created project started um, after these workshops and after the after we got press books, um, not specifically tied to my workshops, but um, something in which our um, OER, our digital scholarship librarian, Denise Hatwick, worked with a faculty member at our UW Bothell campus. Um, uh, to have students create this collaborative work where students learned about open access, creative commons, and their rights and responsibilities and, as open access scholarship authors. Um, and finally, I think some takeaways um, that I have from this whole project. Um, a big one is that I think self-care is really important. Um, not everyone is going to be interested in OER, and you might have colleagues that have questions that were challenging or perhaps um, uh, questioning about um, about OER, um, subject librarians can express that they feel overwhelmed um, sometimes. And um, I think it's just important to keep in mind that we all have our students and users' best interests in mind and find, um, find good ways of working together. Um, I would like to find, um, it's important for me to find sustainable ways beyond these trainings of keeping subject librarians connected with new OER in their disciplines. At a large university like mine, subject librarians are the, the liaison between li the librarian teaching faculty, so keeping them updated on OER in their disciplines is important. Um, and uh, also finding ways of involving subject librarians in open pedagogy projects. On the right, I have this photo from a project that I'm currently working on with a faculty member, Rick Bonus, in our American Ethnic Studies department where students are collaboratively creating um, an OER um, 
at uh, using based on artifacts at our Burke, the Burke Museum of Natural History at our university. Um, and I involved our copyright librarian who's pictured here and then our Harry Murphy, our American Ethnic Studies librarian on the right in, the, in this project. Um, so finding ways of kind of involving subject librarians and functional librarian colleagues um, when I'm involved in um, kind of student authored projects like these I think would be useful for me in the future. Um, I have a link to my workshop materials, which I mentioned were openly licensed, um, and I can share those in the chat. Um, but I just wanted to thank everybody for um, staying with me through this presentation, and I'm happy to take questions if there's still time. We've got time, Lauren. I think it was a really interesting insight um, to, to some of the work you would be doing. So if people want to raise their hand, we can get a microphone to you or we can um, pick up uh, questions from the chat as well. Um, I think um, people are really loving some of the resources that you, you've shared there, uh, Lauren. Great. I'll just pause to see if there's any questions. Um, uh, just one question for me. What, what did you find were people's motivations for coming to the workshops? <laughs> um, I forced them to. <laughs> no, they, they, the workshops were, um, so they were provided during, I, I tried to schedule them during kind of already um, existing meeting times for our subject librarian teams. Um, and I think people were very receptive to that. I think part of the reason we kind of structured our subject librarians into teams was to sort of help consolidate those kinds of, um, uh, you know, sort of professional development training or things that might be of shared interest to everyone. So in the past, before we had the teams, I would have to kind of reach out individually or use a lot of, you know, email listservs to reach out to subject librarian colleagues. but um, with the new kind of regular meetings that these teams have, um, I just I primarily used those as a way to um, to um, get uh, to get in the door, so to speak. Um, however, I think a lot of people were really interested in press books. Um, you know, even if they weren't at the you know before coming to the workshop, kind of. Um, interested in the OER topic, I think people were kind of curious about um, uh, press books as an authoring tool. Um, I think in some ways having having like a concrete tool that they might be able to market to their departments or share with their departments um, seemed very appealing because I think probably many of them had faculty who had been looking for those kind of tools either for digital scholarship or for creating some kind of um, teaching focused resource. So as librarians, we like to be very helpful. And so I think that, you know, saying that the workshop that I was providing was going to provide them with hands on time, really learning press books was was appealing. Right, right. Mm -hmm. There's a question from Jane Secker, um, um, and just around um, the fact that you know, acknowledging that, that open education librarians are, are the more of a thing in in the U.S. than in mm -hmm. the U.K. Uh, and Jane's noting whether this is um, you know the, the textbook model, or I was also wondering what to what degree of impact MOOCs it had or is that just like a flash in the pan and it's more textbook driven? Yeah, I would say at our institution it's more textbook driven. I am, my position was sort of created with addressing textbook affordability in mind, but also um, kind of acknowledging that at least on our Seattle campus, um, most faculty who had expressed interest in OER in the past were more interested in OER authoring rather than remixing or revising existing OER. Um, and so I think in my position, I've been trying to kind of create a balance between addressing textbook affordability issues and also speaking to the needs of instructors who want to um, 
you know, experiment with new ways of teaching where open pedagogy might be part of that or to, you know, author something that might be iterative and changing over time. Um, I think over time that I don't think that MOOCs are as um, they're not as relevant, although maybe in our, our current situation, as people are sort of looking to, um, you know, course content that's not um, sort of more traditional, um, that maybe that will become more relevant. But I think, yeah, I think at least um, at our institution as and most institutions in the US, um, kind of the textbook is the frame of reference for um, OER and OER programs. Um, no, I'm not you. sure if that answered the question. I'm still still waking um, up a little bit here. And so. <laughs> um, I'll just pause and just see if there are, there are any or Okay. Yeah, Jane, Jane. Um, uh, Jane feels that covered covered our question, so thank you for that. So, um, unless there are any further questions, um, if we could just show our appreciation to Lauren, um, Josh, and Lauren as well. Um, thank you for taking the time out in such unusual uh, global sit situation to um, to share your work. So, um, I, I, um, there's definitely a number of takeaways from me from this, particularly looking at some of the platforms available. So thank you very much for that.